Welcome everybody to episode 126, correct? 126, 126 of the China Show, also previously known as ADV Podcasts. Yeah. Um, and today we're going to be talking about a rather shocking revelation, which is uh, probably not too shocking to us, but it is shocking to most people. No, I mean, in doing research, it took us a while to do some research about yeah. this, found some really good reports, but I'll say that it was shocking. The initial report of there being police stations for China in other countries was shocking, but or wasn't shocking, but looking into it and how much they get away with is horrifying to me, and I'm not just playing that up. It actually made me really upset. Yeah, so stick around for our main segment yeah. where we talk about that. But before that, of course, we have to talk about what's news. And what's news when we talk about what's new in China? And well, we've got a bit of a fire going on over here. Maybe um, we'll show you a little bit of footage here and then explain what's going on here. So what you can see, I'll get us out of there, is wild. I'll be honest with you, when you're in a fire like this, Probably don't film. Probably, Probably just... don't chill in your office. Yeah. Um, look, for anyone who's concerned about this fire, uh, officially there were no casualties. Officially. Officially. So that's a good thing. Uh, it looks like everybody managed to evacuate before it really got out of hand. Um, so yeah, everyone's going down. I've actually been a part of a... There was a fire in my apartment building in China. I filmed it. I also went down the stairs and stuff. Yeah. Um, wasn't it a drill? No, there was actually a fire. Oh, wow. It wasn't, wasn't like major yeah, like this. Sure. It was one apartment. Let's see. Yeah. You know, fires break out quite often, actually. Um, and well, after we talk about this, I'll tell you about what happened in my apartment building. But um, one thing I think is kind of dumb is everybody that's walking down the stairs is playing on their phones. Yeah. You know, it's probably a time to not do that. Probably not. Mm. So this fire took place in Changsha, correct? That is right, Changsha, Hunan. Not too far away from Chairman Mao's her birthplace. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apparently just the facade of the building caught on fire. Well, the facade caught on fire, but that's not... It's the whole thing will burn. Yeah. And that's, that's not going to just burn off the front of it. That's what, that's what people are saying. That's yeah. what reports are saying. Mm -hmm. I guess it was hard for me to even want to include this because of how common this is. Sure. Um, and it's not to downplay it. I'm glad that no one was hurt. Oops. But it's like <laughs> making massive news. Yeah. And it's like, dude, that's just because it got out. <laughs> Do you know how much a disaster there is on a daily basis? I mean, you go around any major Chinese city mm. and find some horrific thing happening somewhere. Sure, like I mean? gas explosion or something. Yeah. Um, you know, when uh, we had the fire in my apartment building in Shenzhen, the, it didn't make the news either. No, it never does. And it was bad. Yeah. Um, what happened was, not the one when I, was in, when I was in the fire drill, that was a small one that was put out very quickly and it wasn't a big deal. But I was driving home one day and I noticed a huge pillar of smoke coming from my apartment, uh, my hua yuan as they call it, which means your garden, okay, apartment complex. When I got in there, um, three apartments had burned, like one obviously started and the two above it had completely burnt out, like gutted. They managed to stop the fire, but it was mm. massive. Mm. And you wouldn't think that these concrete buildings, because they're all made of concrete, you would think that it wouldn't really catch fire. Yeah. But what had happened was, and you get this a lot, is my apartment building was near to Huajian Bay, which is the electronics district, right? So people like open and operate businesses out of their apartments. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to run a commercial business out of an apartment, but they all do. And so what had happened was they were storing chemicals and mm -hmm. things like that, because for whatever work they were doing, I don't know, something to do with electronics, but they were storing chemicals in there. And they just spontaneously combusted and burnt a whole bunch of stuff up. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Wow. But the interesting thing about it was fire safety was never taken seriously no. at all. No. And then after that, suddenly they started to do like weekly fire drills. They would put up posters about fire safety. They actually finally like replaced the 10-year-old fire extinguishers. Yeah, but that's in a city. So here's the deal. Yeah. I probably said this a million times, but mm -hmm. there was a facility outside of the city I lived in. Down, down south. Yeah. And they were an international company. 
set up to recycle electronics that need to be recycled properly because of, I don't know, you know more about this, like chemicals mm -hmm. inside of them, KDM yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And uh, what the, the countries will do is they'll say, okay, we'll send you the stuff that we're not going to dispose of because we don't have the facilities to do it properly. Yeah, but our clandestine, whatever you know, whatever company we've set up in China is going to do it for us. Our partner company is going to do it for us. But they're not doing it. No, they're not doing it at all. They're not disassembling and using chemicals to break down. They're certain burning. Things. They're burning it. Yeah, and they're they burning it inside. <laughs> so you'd go by this building, and it was huge, but it was short. It was probably yeah. like maybe four or five floors. And the top two floors, every time I went by, it'd be black smoke billowing, billowing out. Yeah. out of all the windows and you think the building's on fire but actually what they're doing is just burning a bunch of electronics in there yeah that are supposed to be being recycled and that's belching pollution see that everywhere. that's actually a big issue um and i think we need to do a proper proper episode yeah. where we research it but um the way that china made a lot of money in the past is by taking the world's junk yeah Okay, yeah. so you all know there's a lot of waste in America, for instance. I, I know living here, it's like ridiculous. You yeah. order stuff from Amazon, you got like three boxes to carry yeah, a small ridiculous. little thing. It's plastic packaging, yeah. so much junk mail. So all this stuff has to go somewhere, yeah. okay? And if the local facilities can't take care of it, well, sell it to China. China's yeah. like, give us your trash, we'll dispose of it properly, we'll pay us. Yeah. So they take money. But what's been happening a lot is these ships will come to pick up like all the plastics or whatever. And then on the way to China, they just dump it in the ocean, turn around and come back and get more. And they collect a paycheck every time. Yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. Shortcuts are taken. And of course, it's not good for the environment. No, it's horrible. Anyway, these things happen. Let's move on. We have a very interesting, if you watched last week, um, I kind of like this meme. I'll get us out of here. Um, this is very much the China show. It says, Xi Jinping eats a wasp. This is a headline. And you can see him sitting there having uh, a meal and he's picking up a wasp out of a pot. And the dude next to him is like, that one's not cooked yet, sir. <laughs> what does Xi Jinping say? Enough of your so-called advice. Yeah. And he ends up like that. Now, if you saw last week, uh, we showed you a guy who was eating a, a who ate a, a giant hornet, Asian giant hornet, ended up looking like that. Yes. So, yeah. Just thought that was pretty hilarious. Um, what else we got on the cards here for what's new? Mm. Ah, our good friends, the Chamateurs, they're having a bit of a knock-on effect. So let's just refresh everyone's memory. What are the Chamateurs? Chamateurs are the kind of rejected people in society, migrant workers in China. They move from their hometown all the way to a big city like Shenzhen or Changsha or any, any major city. And they'll work in factories. But what happens is they don't have any like culture to latch on to other than being kind of out, outcasts, right? So they'll do huge hairstyles. A lot of them are hairstylists themselves. They do crazy hairstyles. They love crappy like... Techno music. Techno music, kind of like electronica, Chinese yeah. electronica. Uh, they'll say, like, they'll have, like, vocals, like, Daja do chi lai! They all dance and stuff. Yeah. And they have, like, they love to have, like, these flowers and these kind of um, cheap knockoff suits. And they love to smell their finger yeah. and then do a heart. Uh, yeah. It's a whole thing. It's a whole subculture. If you guys missed it, we've done a huge, huge Yeah, you can always find it. Go look at our last uh, mm. the videos. But we thought we'd just refresh, re your, refresh memory. your memory here, right? I just want to show you guys some aggressive shamata. Go back to that okay, for a second, yeah, because I just want to explain what's happening on the screen for all you okay. people that the audio listeners right now are like, what was this nice, pleasant, like stock music that changed into like someone beating on a wall really fast? Yeah, well, this is the live stream. So in China, I've actually cut out a lot of the garbage that was on the screen, but um, the thing down there says new shen. That's a that's like a like a sticker that someone bought. So mm. people are watching these live streams. They got stickers flying. They got gifts. They got points. They got concurrent viewers. They got, uh, you know, how many uh, the top watchers on the top. Like which famous other streamers are watching them currently. And then the mm -hmm. bottom, what I cut off is this live chat that's just going ape with emojis. It's like <laughs> uh, it's like imagine like Fruity Pebbles on the screen, like yeah. live stream. If Fruity Pebbles were people. And they, these shamata are going absolutely insane, seeing who can dance the fastest. Yeah, who can dance the fastest, yeah. I thought this was great. A little, little. But you know what? Shamata, 
has had a knock-on effect. Yes. Because apparently India's now latching on to shamata. Yeah, we found some Indian shamata. So we're gonna show you some Indian shamata here. Check it out. Yeah. What is he doing? I don't know, he's saying something in Hindi and his phone. The point is, is that they are, there are shamata from India now. That's really and cool. It's just weird. I did not expect that to go to a different country. Unless we're sorely mistaken, this is something wildly different. But Maybe it's it looks a, the same. Yeah, it looks very much the same. Either way, it's kind of cool. Oh, before we get into this creepy looking dude, um, have you noticed that whenever you listen to Indian pop music and stuff, it's always like it's in an echo chamber? Can somebody please tell us? I, I want. I have a question for Indians. Our Indian viewers, we know we got a lot of them. Yeah. Um, please tell us. Hopefully, um, I don't want to make you pay money for a super chat, but try try to get our attention maybe on the subreddit or something about is that shamata or is that something completely different that has some overlap? And yeah. then number two, um, why is your music so? Why echoey? does your music <laughs> all have reverb? Like it's very echoey. Every single time I hear music from India, there's massive reverb on it. It's almost got it. It's like that's like part of the feel. It's not. Like it's not new, it. by the way, because no. I grew up with Indian friends. So when I was like super young, maybe we should like make ourselves big so oh, yeah. the child isn't like sure. Over. Yeah, when I was really young, one of my uh, very good friends, his name was Nitash, um, and we used to hang out at his place. And I'm talking when I'm like ten, yeah, twelve thereabouts, right? And that kind of music was still playing back then. His mom used to play that and sound like... 2003, I can remember my Indian friend's mom listening to that while she cooked dinner. Yeah. And it all had reverb. It's and reverb. the music today still has reverb. Just curious about it. Like, it's a cultural thing. I want to know why. Where's the... Why, where, what is the reverb? What does that play? You know, what is that... See, what's the cultural significance? Yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. Anyway, we've okay. got to explain this creepy dude. I'll let you do the introduction. Uh, who is this guy? Well, let's play him first. You want to play? Yeah. Okay. It's really quick. All right, you guys, listen very carefully to what this guy has to say. Okay, listen. Really important. Listen. It's super, actually really important. Super, super important. Let's listen. Okay. Everybody, Malay is I hope you have a good way. Good. Go back. Did, did you only include that one? Or yeah, yeah. Well, oh. oh, we'll build his lore over time. Okay. Because I know a lot about this yeah, guy. Yeah, we got, we got lots of clips of this guy. So, so oops, sorry. Right, there we go. So this is Lu Chao. Okay. And Lu Chao, I don't, I don't want to give away his entire thing yet. What I want to explain is that he, this is a while back. It's back in like 2018. He started making these Douyin videos, which is TikTok. Started making these TikTok videos where he would address his audience and he would say something about his day. He yeah. would say, like, for example, in this one, he says, uh, "Today, I wish everybody, uh, uh, everybody everybody's well. happy, yeah. right? Yeah, everybody's well, right?" Yeah. And then he would say something. So a lot of times, he would then mirror this uh, statement in English, yes, and then sign off. But his key catchphrase was "Jen hao, Jen hao," which means like very good, very good, right? Yeah. But he always it's the way he says it. It's this creepy, like deadpan, like looks in the camera and goes "Jen hao." But who and is it's he? like a serial killer. Yeah, but who is he? So he's uh, he's an actor and a singer, mm. a decently famous one. Right. So he's not just a nobody. No, he's I thought it because like I thought yeah. it. I don't if it's some like mentally disabled person. So I'm not gonna highlight this. Not because yeah. like a normal like singer slash actor, but he's not normal. <laughs> Clearly no. not normal. No. I mean, this is he's creepy. He's mad creepy. But anyway. In this, in this one, I just love this one because of his translation of the Chinese into English. Uh, what did he? St let's listen to that again. Yeah, let's listen again. So, so he's like, everybody, hi, my name is Lu Chao. Yeah. I hope everyone is well. Yeah. Very good. That's his, his catchphrase. Yeah, very good. Everybody, Malay is Lu Chao. Yeah, well, he did say my name is Lucha. Yeah, in here. Yeah, sound like Malay, but whatever. Well, he's clearly, for, I, I would guess he's from, by the way, this is a good little cultural thing for everyone. Uh, people from uh, Hunan, Hubei, Hunan, Hubei type area, and sometimes some parts of Sichuan. 
they mix up the L and the N. So mm. they'll say like lame instead of name. Mm. Or um, even when they speak Chinese, they mix yeah, up Yeah, yeah. I mean, they say Funan instead of Hunan. Yeah, but I'm talking about N and L yeah, switch. I'm yeah, I'm talking about F instead of right, H. Right, There's anyway, two things. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I hope you have a good wear. I hope you is a good wear. I hope you every day is good wear, maybe? No, I... No. Well? I, I mean... Hey, props for trying, dude. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's a difficult language. Malay's Lu Cha. I hope you have a good wear. I hope you have a good wear. That's all I can hear. It's epic. And you know what it reminds me what? of? It reminds me of those t-shirts in China where the 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 words and letters are just nonsense because they want to have yep. English on their shirt or whatever. That's yeah. that's what he just said. Yeah. It's fantastic. Gouda. Gouda in, instead of very good. Oh. That's, that's anyway um <clears throat> one thing that's bizarre about that is you can see he's got a lot of confidence in what he's yeah. saying so he thinks that he's a baller like he's because well, he's an actor yeah so he he thinks that what he's saying is very correct <laughs> right do you think right. he set it up as like an educational thing i think it's almost like a daily vlog thing because like i'll show you guys in the next if you guys yeah. are interested in lucha i got a lot he does yeah, this we thing can include he, him we yeah can include him. he does this thing where he's like i talked to my mom today yeah, and I and it was Jen Ha, you know, it was very right. good, Jen Ha, um, and it's almost like a breakdown of what he did that day. But every time he speaks English, so he says so, at least a word. Yeah, yeah. Say so something. Well, like he did now, he says something in Chinese and English. Okay, so we'll bring him back in the future because I think he's a very interesting character. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the reason I want to throw it in there is he has potential for a lot of lore. Yeah. Because I found a ton of stuff like movie slots he did. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. I don't know how he got his job. Right. I don't know how he got his job as a singer slash actor because he's horrific. Okay, excellent so stuff. So we'll bring him back. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, how about we hit some super chats? Yeah, sure. Let's do it quickly was that before we move on. Yeah, yeah, that was the last. Okay. Charles yeah. Womack says, uh, I assume that you read simplified characters. Can you also read traditional? Uh, definitely not as well. No, but the thing is, you can make some. it out. Yeah, like not a whole some thing. some of them, you like look at it. It's like really, is that the same thing? Mm. But for the mo most part, you can figure it out. Yeah, I I don't really. Know. Yeah, I can. Like I, mean, it just... I can do like like the basic stuff. I can read in traditional, but there's a ton of characters I can't. There's a ton of characters that look completely different, like Che and Dong. You would yeah, be like, yeah. what's going on? Oh, but I know that similar. because I memorized it right. because I lived in Taiwan. But, but usually if you look at like Ma or something, it's just Ma, but with like extra strokes. Yeah, but that's strokes. simple characters. Is there like, yeah. you learn that in the first day of Chinese Yeah, I'm just class. saying yeah, like yeah. as an example, as a sure. simple example. It's gotcha. usually, I think if you know the, the simplified, you can at least guess a good percentage. A good chunk. I would say yeah. I could read maybe 50% 50, 50 of yeah, that. Yeah, at least, at least, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, let's move on. Xinjiang Shampoo says, Xinjiang Shampoo for all your hair and brainwashing needs. Uh, okay. When you think of brainwashing, consider Xinjiang. All right. Dylan Vienna says, good day, lads. Glad to be here. Killer thank video, Seamilk. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, we both had some pretty good videos this week, I think. Yeah, not bad. Lauren Renaud, uh, not bad. I thought both of our videos were good. Yeah, not, not bad is good, right? Not bad is shit. No, not when bad is say good. not bad, it's like, actually what they want to say is it kind of sucks. That's <laughs> what that means. Yeah, not bad. It means like, Depends not bad on, means like you're a piece of shit. No, it just means like the, two the, out of the ten. intonation is like not bad, you know? It's like, I was like, whoa, yeah, it's not, not bad. That's, bad. Th that's when you want to say, that was probably one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, 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 no. But that's I when I rude. just say interesting. Oh, okay. You know, like you try some, someone gives you a taste of some you're food like, oh, or a drink. You're like, oh, yeah, how do you like it? Oh, interesting. That's that like saying like, like it's one. crap. That's like a one. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. you especially, that's yeah. your thing. That's yeah, what you like Interesting. Oh, it's mm. interesting. Yeah. Anyway. Laurent Renaud says, uh, for, a ha for a can of panda repellent. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I feel like panda, panda repellent would be very expensive. Probably. Uh, Anthony Saints, okay, this might be too early, but is the cat available? Oh, no. Now would you like me It is a bit early cat? for that, mate. Um, guys, okay, we're going to continue on in a second, but... Yeah, I just um, want to finish the you want, the ones but pre-show. Okay, ones. you got yeah. another pre-show one. All right, let's do it. Xinjiang Shampoo, have you ever, uh, Winston? If you ever consider a new car project, uh, check out the Herkmobile, Herk built by Conald Eugene Peterson. You got to get it going, buddy. Okay, I'll check it out. And Jin Wani says, "Touch my China through the fence." What on earth does that, that sounds mean? like an innuendo? Anyway, those yeah. are all the pre-show ones. Okay, excellent. Now, guys, uh, before we continue, we have to talk about our sponsor. Um, it sounds like maybe. Maybe. This is one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. <laughs> you see that? Oh my god! I know. Isn't that just disgusting? It's like a sphincter. 
So you might be interested in what we were eating there. Um, you don't have to be eating something like sea penis to stay healthy, by the way, because that is considered very healthy in China. Oh, yeah. Sea penis is like this weird tub tubular, <laughs> not tubular, like, yo, tubular. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's like that's... a tube of flesh that lives in the bottom of the ocean. We ate them raw and live. It's one of the most disturbing things ever, yeah. especially the preparation of it. If you have watched Conquering Northern China, you'll know it. it's horrendous. When you cut it open, you have to like cut it open. All the blood and guts come out. It's horrid. It's horrid. You don't yeah. have to eat that. No, to stay healthy. To stay healthy. In fact, you could use Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens is today's sponsor, and Athletic Greens is basically a dietary supplement that gives you 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, and that's just in one scoop. Mm -hmm. Put it in some water. You mix it. Start, with, start your day right. Uh, this special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, and all the things. Yeah, and for those of you who might be a little skeptical about um, taking some kind of supplement like this, I got a little insider information on this. Um, my friend, who's a very well-known martial artist, says that this stuff is taking the martial arts world by storm. I'm oh, not even joking. That's cool. He actually reached out to me. He's like, hey, you guys do an athletic green sponsorship. Can you get me in there? Cause, you oh, know, really? Yeah, so um, martial really artists cool. are taking it all over. So That's cool. Yeah, it's got one less than one gram of sugar, high-quality mm -hmm. ingredients, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, and you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements uh, to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash ADV to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Yeah, put the kung fu back into your kick. or well, the kick back into your kung fu, either way. <laughs> or... Even if you don't do martial arts. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a great product. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's get into soft power, hour, guys. This is our main segment of the show. Uh, and this is where we talk about how China is using all sorts of sneaky means to take over the world, whether it's through media. And in this case, it's through just opening police stations <laughs> in your country. I mean, so this is more sledgehammer to your face power instead yeah. of soft power. Now, actually, before we even get into this, uh, it wasn't that long ago that there was a big initiative with the Chinese police coming into South Africa. Everyone knows I'm... Yeah, I actually included yeah, that in this. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it a little later. But um, I remember being kind of shocked. And I know at the moment, especially with the whole BRICS thing, you know, the whatever that stands for again. Brazil. Uh, Brazil, Russia. Russia, India. India, something with a C. Let me look it up. <laughs> and then S for South Africa. Um, what would that C be? Uh, China. Oh, yeah, it would be China, <laughs> wouldn't it? I guess, part. well, actually, it's probably the, <laughs> it's the one I want to think about the least, right? Okay, so anyway. Wow. Yeah, they, now we know. Woo! I was wondering, because, you know, in my mind, it's just a puppet thing run by China. So China's <laughs> the, you know, the hosts. I was thinking of the, the sub-countries, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's supposed to be a partnership. Yeah. Um, but all of these countries in the so-called partnership, it's kind of a... a it's so yes, so called Yeah, so-called partnership. It's supposed to be there to counter the West, yeah. basically. It's there to counter, you know, the Five Eyes and everything else and all the other, like, United Nations, whatever you want to say, everything yeah. else. Yeah. They want their own little thing. Yeah. They want to be like, screw the rest of you. We're going to get together and join our own little club over here. So um, you're finding that, unfortunately, South Africa has just become a vassal state of China right now. From many aspects. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and you're seeing there's a lot of promotion uh, of ties mm -hmm. between South Africa and China. It's been going on for a long time now. Yeah, we noticed like an uptick though. Yeah, a massive uptick. You got shills going to South Africa yeah. now. It's and pretty wild. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is this kind of thing's happening. And so as part of that, they had this whole cross-training thing yeah. where they actually had Chinese police coming to South Africa to train the South African police, by the way. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, because South Africa, if any country in the world knows about crime, it's South Africa. How's China going to suddenly come in there and teach them about crime? Yeah. I feel like, well, maybe they teach them how to suppress the locals more and surveil them. Yeah. That's probably what it was. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. That's what's happening. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> anyway, police were going into South Africa in their uniform, sitting down, training local police, having this yeah. whole like 
exchange thing going on. It's kind of shocking to think that they're South Af- in South Africa, where I'm from, there are Chinese police walking around on the streets there enforcing stuff and, te- well, at least training the local police on how to do it. Yeah. So this is a little different, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's going to have this similar like uh, outcome. Right? Yeah. So here's what happened. Yeah, what do you see behind us, by the way, this picture? This is the Fujo Police Overseas Service Station. And what happened is, Mm. to really break it down, I haven't seen a whole lot of articles break this down really succinctly. So pardon me if I go on a little bit, but this is how it works. Fujo is a part, it's a city in China, in eastern China. Fujian. Yeah, and the idea was that the Chinese government wanted to have its own police force or own authorities in other countries that wouldn't usually allow them. Mm. So the idea was that not to send over, hey, hey, Beijing on the phone here, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I want you guys to consider this idea, London. Let's open up a bunch of police stations where uh, Chinese police are going to have authority in your city. They would hang up the phone and be like, that's ridiculous. Sure. But what the, you know, the easier and nicer way to do that is, hey, our local municipality, which has nothing to do with the government, by the way, just our local municipality wants to send over some police officers. And what they're going to do is the police duties that don't require arresting people or harassing people or anything like this. The stuff that police are supposed to do, uh, the peaceful stuff, like facilitating um, personal relations to act as a conduit between local authorities and things like this. And this is how they pitched it. They said, listen particularly European countries. If you let our local municipality, like cops to show up and set up little offices, they'll, they're not going to act like cops. They're going to help the Chinese tourists and oftentimes get into trouble because they don't understand the local language, don't speak English or Spanish or whatever. That was a big push was the whole, let's yeah. hope we're sending Chinese police to help Chinese tourists because of the language barrier, yeah. because of the cultural barrier. Yeah. That was their biggest excuse to get them in. Right. And from the criminal mm. aspect, yeah. the other idea was that we're not going to go arrest anyone that's uh, not breaking laws in your country. It's only going to be to help to find like fraud, like people that are doing telephone telephone and cyber communications fraud Yeah. from uh, from abroad, right? So we'll go and we'll find our people that are committing those crimes, right? And we'll help you because they're committing a crime in your country too. Yeah. Then you finally have reasons for extradition or at least negotiation, right? So what happened very quickly was that they would set up these offices and they would say, yeah, we're here to help Chinese people renew their passports or help them get their necessary health checks for visas, Mm -hmm. right? But what they're actually doing was finding human rights activists and other people that are not breaking local laws, of course. Sure. Political dissidents that are Mm -hmm. anti-CCP, runaway CCP officials that have left the party, uh, all um, just run the gamut. Just harassing the the diaspora, basically. Harassing the diaspora by finding, this is what they did. They allowed a conduit to go into your country and find people that were not breaking local laws, but breaking laws in China. And what they would do is coerce, they'd find their location, Mm -hmm. coerce them into this police office. Yeah. And then instead of saying, here, let me help you renew your passport, they're saying, here, let's get on a video call. And by the way, we have your parents on the other end. Say hi next uh, next to their parents on the video call would be a police officer. Sure. Or a public security bureau in mm-hmm. China saying, you're in big trouble. You better come back home before we punish your parents. Yeah. Before we uh, don't allow your kids to go to public school anymore. That was a, one that can be yeah. verified, by the way. Yeah. Not allowing children, their their children or relatives in China to go to school. Yeah. Um, in some very drastic cases, are extra extra uh, extra legal ways of kidnap actually kidnapping people. So, sure. what this was is an intelligence gathering office to find Chinese diaspora in these countries. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to hazard a guess that it goes beyond Chinese diaspora. Sure. Anybody that has anything to do against the Chinese government. Sure. This helps facilitate finding the location of these people to, in the end, really harass them, get them to come back home. And they brag about how, how they've managed to get 200,000 plus people home without having to go through extradition. Yeah. So it's basically a mafia tactic mm-hmm. to threaten people to the point where they're going to go home by themselves because yes. they don't want the consequences of what's about to come. The Chinese government runs like the mafia, and this is what they've been doing, and it's alarming to see the reach that yes. they've actually had. Well, so we want to go through think, some of this. Just think about it, right? Um, in order to be extradited to China, you need to have an extradition treaty. Yeah. Okay? Um, and if you do have an extradition, extradition treaty with a country... Um, the laws have to match up. They have to be equivalent. So let's just say uh, you break a law in China. Yes. Okay. 
like whatever, you stand on a photo of Xi Jinping. Sure, whatever. So you stand on a photo of Xi Jinping in China, that's an arrestable offense, I'm guessing. Yeah, right? I'm course. pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Probably put you in front of a firing squad. Yeah, that point, yeah. But whatever. But if you stand on a picture of Xi Jinping in America, that's freedom of expression yeah, or whatever. Of you You're can. not going to go to no. jail. You're not going no. to get arrested. But um, So then if China comes to the American government and says, hey, that guy broke the law. We want him to go to jail or firing squad in China. America's like, get no. bent. Yeah. Get bent. You can go stand home. on a picture all, you know, all, all day long. So they need to find another way to get these people back. Yeah. So by setting up these little groups. And look, this is when they're allowed to do this. Even if they aren't allowed to set up these police stations, they still do it anyway. Yes. They'll use the Confucius Institutes, cultural exchange programs, anything where they've got boots on the ground. Well, I'll, I'll go through some examples after you Yeah, the, after you go through some the, slides. The but. consulates, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's get into some concrete examples. So let's look at these slides that you've got over here. So this, this is one from Spain. Yeah. That's an official one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it goes beyond that. It's not just in Spain. But, by the way, Fuzhou, it's very interesting that, that Fuzhou keeps popping up because Fujian is historically known as the province where the most Chinese people mm -hmm. have like immigrated from, you know, because it was always like a fishing mm -hmm. kind of a, a province, I guess you could call it, with the coastline there. And so people would always kind of get on these boats and go abroad. And I'm talking about everywhere in Japan, nine times out of ten, you talk to a Chinese person in Japan, they're from Fuzhou or Fujian, uh, I should say. All the illegal immigrants I met and like developed relationships with or whatever mm -hmm. um, were from Fujian. Yeah, Fujian is well known as being mm -hmm. like this place. Like I went to, uh, in Tucson, I went to like an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. Mm -hmm. They were all from Fujian yep. and they were all illegal and they told me, you know. Yeah, yeah. But that's just the way it is. You spoke Chinese. Yeah, I they spoke to them. In, no, 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 no. They were like all like laid back and I was sure. like, yeah, you know, they're like, yeah, I've been here for 10 years, blah, 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 yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But that's, the Fujian is well known for having these like people go everywhere. So the fact that they've got like the Fuzhou police overseas, it's kind of like a, just a symbol of like, this is China's, you know, and why do you come here? Fingers into the world. You come here because we understand this. And yeah. that is exactly correct. Yeah. You'll see the Chinese government operate with things that have classically been involved with certain things. Yeah. So, for example, Fujian classically being a place where people would escape from has the apparatus involved in tracking people down. Yeah. Because that's their department. If you correct. see things come out of uh, a good example is Chongqing. Yeah. If you see anything come out of Chongqing, massive warning flags, woo, -woo yeah, intelligence. sirens, because it's intelligence related. If you yeah. see anything revolving around like tourism with Chongqing or anything, really, it's coming out of Chongqing because, especially if it's promoting anything internationally, it's yeah. because that's the, t that's the t uh, intelligence apparatus of China. And that's even before the CCP. It's yeah. set up for torture investigation, uh, overseas intelligence, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you'll find places in China that are specialized in certain things. That's why you see Fujian here. Correct. Um, so so, some, so this, this also happened in Zambia. Mm -hmm. And in Zambia is a good example of one that goes beyond uh, just the little partnership of, oh, we're going to help tourists and stuff. This is actual partnership with police, right? Yeah. So you'll find that they'll, they'll go beyond the little office, right? Mm -hmm. The little office aspect. They'll usually reserve that for developed countries yeah. or countries that have rule of law and like yeah. actual judicial system. In these countries like Zambia, they'll do full on cooperation. Yeah. Right? So the, the Chinese police, as you can see, there will be part of the police force there walking around and, you know, keeping an eye on their assets and whatnot. Yes, there. that's uh, that's soft power, but it's also a dual purpose because what they there's a lot of overseas Chinese in these African communities. Mm. And the reason is they're there for the Belt and Road Initiative projects. They'll yes. ship in workers. They don't know what their citizens are getting up to when they're abroad. In fact, they'll get up to a lot of crazy stuff, sure. right? Uh, especially in countries that are a little bit less lawful, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit less developed. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll be able to have offices there to actually effectively govern their own populace in a foreign country, yeah. which is crazy. A lot of the times they also send the police in there to safeguard their projects mm -hmm. because you'll find out in Africa specifically there are a lot of the locals are very unhappy with the the project, whatever it might be, gold mining or whatever the Chinese uh, um, companies are doing there. Mm -hmm. They're like destroying the environment, doing all this stuff, cutting yeah. down the trees, exploiting the locals. And so there'll be unrest. So they yeah. send the Chinese police in there to actually just safeguard their operations. Yeah. It's yeah. like pretty much like sending the military in. Yeah. You know? It's a dual purpose. You can yeah. watch your people, make sure they're not doing anything they're not supposed to, and then safeguard their projects. Yeah. Right. Mm. It's a big thing. In Africa, anyway. In Africa, yeah. It's specific to Africa. So it was in Zambia. Um, 
So that was an example of like a full takeover. You had Serbia, right? Yeah, Serbia. You have Serbia uh, really just go in full partnership with the Chinese police as yeah, well. This is a picture of the Chinese police in Serbia, by the yeah. way. And that in, in Croatia as well. Yeah. You have a situation where these European countries that are not fully in line with the West, right? Mm -hmm. Fully in line with the whole Western, like maybe let's keep dictatorships at bay type of thing. Sure. I mean, let's look at Serbia's relationship with Russia and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, more inclined to partnership, have partnerships with China. Yeah. And that's down to a legal, uh, down to the to legal apparatus as well. Not just yeah. like, oh, let's build a factory together, a bridge together. We're yeah. talking about, let's let your police patrol the streets. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Sovereign country. They, they did. Yeah. They, they that's neo-colonial. They let the police yes. walk in the streets. So uh, Italy has had a very long tradition mm. with this, by the way. Yeah. Massively long tradition with uh, these partnerships. They even had some uh, token Italian police go to Guangzhou to patrol yeah. with the Chinese police and stuff, which is wild because Italy's perception of China is at a, like an all-time low. And I think that they're regretting a lot of these partnerships that they, they came up with. Sure. And there's actually a lot of sour history behind that because during the pandemic... Oh, China blamed Italy first. Yeah, China blamed Italy. And so what happened was Italy was like beholden to get all these supplies and stuff from China that they were, China was hoarding. Yeah. And they started to get real sour because the whole thing was they were partnered in the beginning with all these economic partnerships. Italy signed on the freaking Belt and Road project, yeah. for God's sake. Was it Italy that sent um, initially yes. like they, they sent donations yeah. and then they had to buy them back? So you understand how sour this got. For like masks and PPE yeah. and stuff, yeah. They had to buy back their donations and then China blamed them, yeah, right? Blamed at an official them level. For that. Yeah, they were like, Italy is where the coronavirus came from. Yeah. So Italy goes, wait, wait, well, hold your horses here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now, Probably like, hold your horses, yeah. you know? <laughs> hold your horses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do you know how an Italian person screams? No. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I love um, Italians, by the way. Yeah, we, uh, absolutely. Mm. I grew up in an Italian area. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I was the only non-Italian at my church. Right. You know, because they're all Catholic. Yeah. Anyway, uh, long story short, the, I think the partnership has been fully sullied. Like I have seen, if you watch Pew Research polls or anything, yeah. the public perception data and leadership data now at this point is shifting. Italy is, the China's perception in Italy is tanking. Absolutely sure. tanking. Yeah. Uh, you don't make any tank jokes, please. No, no I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh, you can if you want. Yeah. Uh, there's the Fuzhou yeah, this, overseas police station in Italy. Yeah, this is the one in Italy. Again, yeah. Fuzhou, and it's just it's just representative. It just means like this. this is our conduit into the outside world. Yes. You know? Absolutely. That's why it's not a, like a local thing. It's just, yeah, China does these things. Um, this, is, this is the Italian cops in Guangzhou. Okay, that's before, interesting. From, that's a while ago. Yeah, that is. I remember reading the articles about that. Yeah. It's in Rome. Mm -hmm. Doesn't Rome still recognize Taiwan? Uh, the Vatican, not Rome. Oh, the, the Vatican. Rome is a city. Yeah. Okay. Isn't the Vatican a, a country too? Yes. Yeah. Vatican's a country, but it's not Rome. It's, it's, in, in, Rome. it's in Rome, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe in Rome, the Vatican. Rome, Rome is around the Vatican. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. nice. Yeah, it surrounds it. When yeah. in Rome. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Same Italy. Italy, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is here, South this Africa. Is, yeah, you can talk about this a little bit. Well, so what, I, what jurisdiction do they have there? I remember, now this is a while ago that when this happened, and I just remember the whole thing was the, Chi the Chinese police were going to come down. Uh, and train the local police and cooperate with them. Right. Now, unfortunately, South Africa suffers uh, from a very corrupt Sorry, that government. Sorry, Milan, not Rome. So it's not, it was in Milan. Yeah. It's Italy. Yeah. One of those is Rome. I wouldn't know the difference myself. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just tisking, you know, because you should like, know better. I love Italy. Yeah, you, love Italy. you should know better. You're a geography boy, right? I am, I am. Sorry. Yeah, you got like, Good. instead of a waifu pillow, you've got like a... A it's like a geography it's, pillow. It's a globe. Yeah. I sleep with a globe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't make fans. You have like a globe that, mask you get your wife no. to wear. You know, like a it's gift like mask, a but it's a globe. <laughs> it's a globe. No fan art. I okay. ban you all from all right, fan anyway. art. We'll get the lead off yeah. the subreddit of that. That's disgusting. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, I remember it was a big cooperation thing. But China already has its claws very deeply into the South African government. And so anything goes rarely. And the fact that you've got, you know, there we are, Chinese police in full uniform yeah. in South Africa doing their thing is always a very big issue. Mm -hmm. And again, they always make excuses that it's like, oh, we're here to help the understanding of Chinese tourists yeah. and that kind of it's, thing. Which that's is how nonsense. they get in. That's how they get in. Because think about what a better conduit. 
Yeah. Listen, a lot of countries have problems with like Chinese tourists uh, not being able to communicate, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you can, if you can be the guy and do it for free. I'd like everyone also to pay attention to the sign in the background there. So it says, um, grand opening of the uh, new Chinese community and police cooperation center. So it's a Chinese community and police cooperation center. So it's there to stay. I love the acronym. Yeah. <laughs> CCP. CP, yeah, it is. The Chinese community yeah. police. South African Nelson Mandela, um, whatever, road or bay or whatever. Um, take a look over there. It's got the Confucius Institute logo too. Mm -hmm. So the Confucius Institute is also... Uh, involved well actually can i just cut to the chase yeah it turns out that these police centers were run by the united front yeah so yeah. after investigation the united front is responsible for china's influence abroad of course uh in, in nefarious influence yeah look yeah. the united front is really in, uh, this this government organization and its entire purpose is to influence um the rest of the world yeah. you know and you'll find united front in your country in various different forms yeah you know, whether it's through some kind of media, they yeah. buy out the newspapers, they, they they work from the local consulates, they have the Confucius Institute, all of this, it works yeah. together. That's what's called the United Front. It's like every presence of Chinese, you know, um, CCP in your country is yeah. all part of the United Front. Anyway, the Confucius Institute is involved. This is bad. And if it's a community center, co police cooperation center, that means it's permanent. It means it's there. Right. They're going to have Chinese police there all the time. Yep. You know, So yeah, it just kind of sucks. Yeah. Not planning on visiting South Africa anytime soon. Yeah. Um, they'll, so, they'll drag me into one of those. Yeah, and they'll put you down on the, the video chat. They'll do worse than that. Put me in a tiger chair. Put you in a tiger chair and never let you out. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway, so... Uh, I wanted to show this map. There's a fantastic report. And I don't know why this isn't going around because there's a lot of news about this, right? There is a full report about all of this, about right. every country this has happened with citations and examples. Okay. And I know I think a lot of people just want some digestible news thing. Yeah. But I highly recommend you go look at that report because this will give you the ammo that you need to kind of figure out if your country is involved in this. Yeah. Maybe what you can do. Sure. Uh, so it's in the description, but this is from Safeguard Defenders. And what they did was they went through and found out where each uh, police station was. Right. And there's one branch called the Fujio, right? The Fujio ones that you've already yeah, seen. Fujio That's in the light, uh, the light green. Yeah, because those are kind of mm. trying to pretend to play by the rules. They're not, you know, full on police on the Actually, street. Actually, the other one is as well. That's Qingtian, which is just a, a city in Zhejiang, right? right? It's the same thing. Right. But it's there like, oh, we're sister cities, right, you know? Right. So like, <laughs> I sound like James <laughs> Charles there. Okay. Uh, Qingtian, yeah. like, uh, we're Qingtian, so we have more relationships with uh, Brazil. Right. right. For example. So we are more like we Rio de, Rio de Janeiro might be partnered with. Right. So they'll be like, we'll, we'll take care of this one. Right. So some of them have overlap as yeah, well. Both. So there turns out to be about 30, I believe it's 30. So let me just get, get this correct. 36 country, uh, 36 in Europe alone. And then total is 54 police centers. Right. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. There's even one in New York City. Oh, OK. For God's sakes. And I, I say that's crazy because America typically wouldn't it's a country that wouldn't allow this kind of stuff. Yeah. I could see a lot of like Brazil it's, or something, you know what I mean? It's too easy to take advantage of uh, of America. If you're willing to break the law, it's very easy. For sure. For you sure. Know? I've seen it happen a lot here. Just come in and do whatever they want, you know? Yeah, for sure. I want you guys here uh, to see if your country is involved in this because you can make some decisions on what you want to do about it. Uh, right. So Ireland, mm -hmm. right? There's one in Dublin. Netherlands, Portugal... Czech Republic, Hungary. Portugal has two. Uh, three, maybe. Italy, okay. France, Spain, UK, Greece, Canada, US, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Uzbekistan, Mongolia, Brunei, uh, Japan, Nigeria, and Lesotho. Mm -hmm. uh, Cambodia, Tanzania, Serbia, Ukraine, Australia, Ecuador, Brazil, Sweden, Austria, Spain, France, uh, Italy, Germany, Slovakia, Hungary, Czech Republic, Portugal, and Netherlands. Those are some repeats because they have multiple offices. Right. Um, if you're on there... I would probably like bring it up with someone because that's kind of not only is it outlandish, it's 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 wrong. I mean, look, in that list did not include South Africa, but we know that they have their thing there. Yes, but that's these are the Qingtian and the Fuzhou oh, those are Fuzhou. Yeah, I guess the, the one in South Africa is just basically <laughs> yes. like bring 
Bring your You're police. You're not hiding. This no. is my point of this this study and this graph yeah. for you guys to absorb is that these are the ones they're trying to hide behind the facade of being and a partnership. The interesting thing is like where some of them are hidden. Like some of them yeah. are what operating operating out of Chinese restaurants. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So there were two that we can confirm. One was operating out of, and this is the UK. The UK is hitting it because they did just yeah. The UK just made a. There was an article that actually sparked us looking to into actually this. Yeah. find these reports. Yeah. yeah. And there was uh, two. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of two was in London, right, in the UK. Right. And it was operating as a real estate company. So right. you can imagine this real estate company that's attracting Chinese people to come make investments in yes. property in, in London. But then also keeping an eye on is keeping clients. An eye on, literally creating fi intelligence files yeah. to figure out and run checks on these people and figure out who they are and then if they need to be extra extra extradited, <laughs> you know, through, through non-legal means, you yeah. know, and interrogated. And the other one, was in Glasgow, mm -hmm. in uh, Scotland, in the UK. And that was operating in a Chinese restaurant. Yeah. I believe on like a different floor of a Chinese restaurant. Well, I mean, look, here's the thing. That's ki kind of smart. Yeah. The majority of money that is laundered out of China by corrupt officials and so on ends up in foreign real estate. Yeah. Look at Canada. Why do you think you're paying out the nose for a, a place in Vancouver? It's because all the corrupt money out of China ended up in the real estate market yeah. there. Yes. Australia too. Uh, California, all these places. When you have somebody with all this money to get out of China, they've stolen it or taken bribes or whatever, or they feel like there's going to be a crackdown or whatever. Yeah. Got to get the money out. Where's the best place to take it? Go and buy a house in, an, in a foreign country because at least that's going to be stable. It's going to be worth more money. It'll keep increasing. Yes. It's yes. a good way to get your launder your money out. And yeah. it seems like every country around the world is just hungry for that. They're like, come buy our real estate. Do it. Come on, we don't care about our local population. Let's drive those market prices up, you know? Come yeah. on, come on, do it. So they do. So that makes total sense to set yourself up as a real estate company because there are big services out there that offer real estate um, services to Chinese-speaking people. Because, you know, when you've got a corrupt mm. official coming over to buy a mansion in Vancouver, they're not going to speak English. No. They're not going to be contacting Betty Sue's no. real estate. It'll be a it, Chinese it'll real be, estate. It'll be... Betty Sue. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they'll they be like, hey, listen, you want to come buy real estate in wherever the UK? We speak your language. We'll set you up. We yeah. know all the rules, all that. And they're like, great, let's use them. And they come in and then they basically fall into a trap because yes. then the real estate agent's like, ha, we That's actually correct. work for the government and you are trying to buy this property with our stolen corrupt money that we got from someone else through a bribe. So give it back. Yeah. Now, an important thing I want to end with here yes. is that we didn't do anything here. This this groundwork's been laid. Like there yeah. have been so much, there's been tons of investigation into sure. this. This has been exposed for years now. Yeah. Um, and it took me, you know, a few hours to put everything together. Maybe actually a couple days. We did, really. but we did cover this in the past, like yes, years ago. that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. a culmination of things. If people are out there doing, we're just telling you about yeah. it. The people have been doing the work to find this information, and yet for some reason it doesn't seem to be reaching leadership or Congress or any parliaments, right? Yeah. And if it does reach it, why has nothing been done yet? I'm just just asking. Yeah, why? I don't get it. Why are they allowed to operate? The, the United Front has been allowed to operate for the longest time, and it seems like such a difficult and slow process to get them out of our institutions across yeah. the world. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm not even just talking about America. In South Africa, the Confucius Institute is dug into the biggest top universities. It's dug into society yeah. there. It's so frustrating. I've got people in the, the Cape Town Stellenbosch University sending me yes. messages about the Confucius Institute giving cash rewards for film students to for make propaganda. videos to say how great Xi Jinping is. Yeah. What the hell is going on where South Africa, sh sh go make a video about Mandela or something. Right. What are you doing making a video about how great Xi Jinping is? Right. It's got nothing to do with you. No. Film students in Stellenbosch, you, you should be like really ashamed of yourself if you're making a video praising Xi Jinping. Oh man, you know what's crazy is that I don't, and for I'm, cash prizes, you know? If we're going to cap this up in South Africa, <laughs> yeah. I, I've been increasingly interested in watching very closely how much China's putting into influence operations yeah. and then how much it's actually working. Yeah. Because there's a lot of uh, think tanks that are actually 
able to compile some of this data. Yeah. And South Africa actually hasn't seen a huge return on their investment for China. Yeah. What China's pumping in insane amounts of money for influence operations. Yeah. But by and large, South Africa hasn't been super receptive to it from a personal level. Mm. Uh, but what I do see happening is, like you said, in these universities or institutions, just basically forcing people to do yeah, it, right? Exactly. Give, trying to give them cash prizes to make <laughs> yeah. propaganda yeah. for China so that they can use in China. Yeah, because that's what they want. Yeah. They want to be able it's to like show it in China. They'll be like, look at how much respect the rest of the world has for Xi Jinping, for instance. Yes. And they'll show like a film student's um, thing. By the way, take a look at the timeline of the video there. Oh, am I surprised? <laughs> no. no. 444. We always manage to hit those numbers. Anyway, guys, um, before we continue here, we just wanted to remind all of you guys about Shaban Ho. Yeah. You know, yes, you know what Shaban absolutely. Ho is? Can I show them a little... Well, Shaban Ho is our Monday show. Yeah. Can I show them a little clip? Yeah. All right. You ready for this, guys? Let's do it. Down. Give, give me some money. money. You knock me down. Pay, pay me. me. I know. Was that Beijing? All the Shaban Ho's out there. The Shaban Ho's. The real Shaban Ho's. How many snakes have you slid down? <laughs> Explain to us, what kind of snake is this? What I don't know. <laughs> it's like it's a slippery snake, right? A crazy expat stories. Basically a show about scumbags. The thing is, it's fake. Inject the tiger with narcotics. It's orchestrated. Ooh, that just sounds made up. <laughs> There's no compassion. Liverpool, who wants to be in a pool of liver? Very good, good, good. <laughs> how sure, how, how sure. <laughs> so guys if you're interested in checking out shaban ho it's kind of our little vip club on mondays it's a lot of fun it's awesome yeah uh, we've been going through this ridiculous like all the worst <laughs> expats we ever met we kind of hit the bottom of the barrel and our final in the, in the in a, don't make it sound like we hit the bottom of the barrel like we ran out of content no we no. just found the worst people yes so we kind of hit the bottom of the barrel as far as expats are concerned yeah. and we've kind of reached the end of that story arc. Mm. So we're going to move on to a completely new topic on Monday. But if you're interested in that kind of thing, please just go check us out. You can check us out on patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. And uh, it's a big laugh. It's a lot of fun. Oh, it's great. It's yeah. fantastic. So we have, we ha what was our video? We actually have a topic for Monday. Yes, we do. Uh, I forgot, but I have it written down. And you guys <laughs> should go join us on Monday. It's going to be freaking awesome. Yeah. We love it. Anyway, it's back to the show here, guys. Let's uh, move on to our next topic, which of course is Walmart Corner. So we're talking about Walmart Corner. This is where we talk about the haters and what they're up to and all the nonsense that they're doing. And I mean, again, I feel like the <laughs> I really feel like that the Chinese government needs to put a bit of a muzzle on the internet trolls. Yeah. Sometimes, what do you well, think? Well, no, because they want them to do it. They're operating on their behalf. Yeah, I know. But I mean, if they want, don't make it sound like the Chinese government's the good guys here. They're not. No, I'm not. They're not the good guys. Sure. That's why I'm saying they should put a muzzle on them. Right. Right. So tell, explain what's going on. First so this of all, is U.S. I, I mean, just to make this incredibly simple. Yeah. This is the U.S. official uh, embassy, mm -hmm. right, in China, wishing yeah. everyone a happy Moon Festival, right? Yeah. So that's what you do. It's like saying, yeah. uh, if the Chinese consulate said, "We wish all Americans a, a Merry Christmas," but you know, it's different yes. here, or a Happy New Year. This is like. We wish all Chinese people a happy Mid Autumn Festival. Yeah, right? it's like everyone. I uh, hope you're, you know, basically says like, you know, our partnership's great. Like, hope you guys wish you best. Anyway, the important thing about this was the response. Yeah, because <laughs> this is posted on Weibo. Yeah, uh, from the American official account on Weibo. Yeah. And the response was, well, a lot of the response was, oh, I wish you... Uh, a happy, happy September 11th. Happy September 11th. Or I wish, uh, you know, basically says, yeah, I wish you a happy uh, September 11th. I hope another September 11th ha can't happen. You know, I hope you have another event like this. Yeah. Uh, and they went on and on. It was, it was just horrid. Just disgusting there stuff. There were a couple of people that were like, for us ordinary Chinese people, thank you very much. Sure. Um, we wish you the best too. Then they started Americans to too. dox the guy. The... Well, actually, I looked into that. <laughs> They're doxing someone else, like oh, another American official. Another it's an American yeah, official? It's... <laughs> They said like he's at a certain hotel, hotel in on, a certain room, on a certain floor. <laughs> I know. Like this is vicious, and it wasn't removed. No, of course not. 
And again, if something like that isn't removed from the internet in China, it means that the government endorses that and condones yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And they for pro sure. probably oh, they love are it. behind it. Yeah. yeah, they're behind it. Yeah, for sure. So just, just uh, wanted people to understand how gross it can get yeah. um, on the Chinese internet. You know, you don't do not celebrate um, terrorist attacks. Probably not. Especially if someone's being nice and wishing yeah, you a... wishing you a happy moon festival. Yeah, exactly. Not for very sure. classy. No. Not very classy at all. Now, um, we've got to move on quickly into world news, guys, because it's it's kind of important, okay? Yeah. And it's a bit longer than usual because yeah. we've got some topics to cover. Worldview, talk about everything in the world with regards specifically to China. And this time we're going back to the World Health Organization. What did they do? Ooh. What did Tedros do? Tedros, by the way, in case you forgot, is a big part of, along with... Peter Bolsack, Tedros and Bolsack, they really helped China cover up the COVID um, pandemic outbreak in the beginning. Yes. Um, and he basically took China's word for it when China was saying like, oh, there's no human to human transmission, even though China already knew there was human to human transmission. Um, you know, the, the World Health Organization took their word for it and they tweeted it out and they told everyone there's no human to human transmission. They also defended China rigorously. Oh, it was bad. They were saying that, you know, calling people racist. I got so were... much shit for going after them in the beginning, yeah. but it turns out I was right about every single thing they did. They literally yeah. shut down every dialogue that blamed the Chinese government for a cover up in the beginning. Yeah. And in the end, I almost spoke Chinese. Yeah. In the yeah, end, yeah. it turned out to be true. <laughs> Yeah, no, look, the, the World Health Organization, unfortunately, uh, got a lot of funding, and especially Tedros himself, this guy. He owes his position in the World Health Organization to China. They um, vouched for him, and they you know, helped him gain his position. So, of course, yeah. he's beholden to them in the pocket of the CCP, basically, um, for all intents and purposes. And so he was just listening to what they had to say. He was defending them vehemently and so on and so forth. And it turns out, of course, that he was wrong, China was wrong, and everyone suffered as a result. Correct. You know, yeah. so... Um, oh, anyway, let's get to the point. Let's get to the point here. So the, the WHO yeah. declared that the end of the COVID pandemic is in sight. And to really just break it down in simple terms, COVID has turned and morphed into a not-as-deadly virus. It's not like in the beginning. The world has kind of figured out how to deal with it in their own ways. Most countries can kind of agree that we got to let people get back to their normal lives because it's now uh, the death rate's just not at a level where it's a pandemic anymore, right? Yeah. Well, at least towards the mm -hmm. end, getting towards yeah. the end of it, right? So the world's like, cool, thanks for coming around. <laughs> Appreciate that, WHO. Let's finally get back on to having reason yes. and logic instead of letting China lead the world into an absolute pit of destruction and hell. Yeah. How about listening to proper science yeah. and research rather than just listening to China? Instead of an authoritarian dictator. A place that paints their mountains green. Yes. If you <laughs> want to go follow the country that paints their mountains green. Yeah, and the, the grass and the trees. Then you're going to let the world die. Yeah, exactly. We're all going to die. Yeah, yeah. So everyone's happy about this news. Yeah. Everyone wants to hear this. It's like a unified approach, which is nice. It's kind of yeah. like a light at the end of the tunnel type of thing. Yeah, everyone's like, okay, yeah, we, yeah, we've dealt with it. Let's, yeah. let's just, de we're going to continue to deal with it, but we're going to move on and get back to normal, basically. That's absolutely correct. What, what was China's response to this? You know, because they've got the zero COVID policy right now, right? Yes. What did they do when this news came out? They blocked it. <laughs> they blocked the news. They censored it. They blocked it. People in China are not allowed to read this, watch it, listen to it. Or talk about it. So when the WHO completely blindly followed the Chinese government, oh, they lead, praised the crap out of it. When they did that, Dude. that was great. Yeah, for the, for China. Yeah. But now that they're saying something that goes against, because China is the only country doing the zero COVID yeah. nonsense, right? The zero COVID policy, where no COVID is allowed, and everyone has to go through these lockdowns. Hundred something million people are being affected by lockdowns right now in China. Yeah. Right? It's insane that China's still doing this. Even South Africa, I can't, I don't know the exact story, but apparently the they've ruled that like uh, mandating a vaccine is unconstitutional. Yeah, and that's a country that was going ape with lockdowns. Remember they banned the sale of alcohol yeah. and cigarettes? Like they went pretty authoritarian on the lockdowns. I mean, alcohol, I, I get it because in South Africa, people drink and then they they cause crimes, okay? Anyway. Well, I mean, but in South Africa specifically, <laughs> sure, it's like, sure. that's a, there's probably a tactic to stop just the complete destruction of society, but cigarettes? 
Yeah, why cigarettes? I mean, why ban the sale of cigarettes? I just absolutely no, because it makes people's lungs worse and they get COVID. <laughs> Maybe, on. but I'm just thinking, what's yeah. the point? I have but no idea. Turns out some of the corrupt officials' um, daughters and stuff were selling, like, took over the black market for selling cigarettes. No way. That's probably why. That's because cigarette actually cigarette smuggling is insane money. Yeah. It's crazy because the tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, whatever. Anyway, that's yeah. A, that's a different. Story. Just saying, so, like the the world, the yeah. rest of the world's not doing the zero COVID. No, crap. in ch only China is, mm. and China can't be wrong about it, and that's the problem. Yeah. As much as you might praise China for, like, even if you're an anti CCP, but you're pro China policy and like, oh, they built high speed rails or sure. oh, they did whatever ma massive megastructure project. Mm -hmm. That's what you can do when you cut through the red tape and you have one leader making decisions. Sure. That all goes out the window when you realize those decisions suck. Yeah. Like zero COVID comes from the top. It comes from Xi Jinping or at least his cabinet, right? Probably Xi Jinping. And that's got to be his thing. Yeah. Every Chinese leader, Mao, Deng, right? Jiang, Hu. You all have a, a, an event that you're responsible for. Yeah. And that's your legacy. So you can move on. The next leader takes over. So you'll have like the great opening. Yeah, have, of course. Reforms. Uh, the new China. Mao Zedong is famous for making the new China and yeah. taking over China, right? Yeah. There's reform and opening. There's uh, all, all these things like uh, market reform, right? Like yes. Jiang Zemin pro-market reform. You're famous for doing something, yeah. right? Whether it's good or bad. Uh, Xi Jinping's famous for screwing up China. Right. So imagine, you know, you latch onto this idea from the beginning that, okay, I'll be the one that mm -hmm. gets rid of COVID, zero COVID, right? Yeah. Zero COVID is going to be me, yeah, I'm going to be the one that's famous for taking China to a level where the rest of the world died and it's millions of people died and I'm the one that eradicated it. The worst nightmare happened. COVID became not very deadly. Yes. The rest of the world's like, I don't care anymore. The economies are not stagnating anymore because they're able to actually participate. You know, yeah. recession notwithstanding, like people can go back to work. Yeah. In China, they're neutering, stagnating and actually imploding. Yeah. Their country is imploding. Because of this zero COVID policy. Yes, yeah, ridiculous. It's crazy. I just covered it in my latest video. And when you have a situation where that one leader dictates that, then there's no reform. There's yeah. no reform able. So you have to stop news like the WHO, yeah. who's previously in your pocket, saying, yeah. listen, it's kind of over, guys. Let's let's relax now. I, I actually just want to point out once again the complete turnabout. Like, yeah. China is such a... Um, a master of uh, just doing whatever's convenient at the moment, yeah. right? And when the WHO, when they managed to uh, finagle the WHO and make them say what they wanted to say by lying to them and also by not allowing them to go and look at the labs, not allowing them to do any investigations and all that kind of crap and convincing them, twisting their arm, yeah. then they were like, look, the WHO said this. And yes. every time yeah. someone, anyone around the world questioned China, they would just throw up the WHO yeah. reports. They'd say, the WHO See, is on it. our side. Look, yeah. the WHO said this. We didn't say it, they did. Yeah. Yeah. But meanwhile, no, what they're saying is like, we made them say this. Correct, right? it's but actually a great analogy is like all mm -hmm. the human rights think tanks that they create in different countries. Yeah. Because then they can say, oh, this study says that the Uyghurs are not in concentration camps and it came from the Netherlands, but it's actually their own. It's their own thing. Right. Yeah, but then now suddenly the WHO starts to say things that they don't like. They right. just block and censor them. Correct. So it's just fair weather, friends. Yep. It's just nonsense. That's the way the Chinese government works. Correct. All right. So that's what's happening on that front. Let's move on. Yeah, well, I oh, mean, it's, just it's part the same part of it. I'll just make it small again so you can actually see the headlines there. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Senator Hall, you're... Now this, guys, before we get into this, TikTok. Everyone knows TikTok, right? Yes. Um, TikTok is, for those of you who don't know, it's a Chinese app, okay? Um, Everyone knows what TikTok is. <laughs> yeah, but it is a Chinese app. Yes. I just have to keep reminding people. Yes. They have... The so-called American version, which is called TikTok, it's actually Douyin, which you know is a derivative of previous software out musically, there. Yeah. musically and Vine and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing, right? Anyway, fantastically popular, as everyone knows, very popular around the world. The algorithms are fantastic to keep people's attention. It's a fantastic waste of your life. If, oh, it's like it's if you like enjoy it. But no judgment. Drugs. Yeah, but like... No oh, yeah, no judgment. It's just it's like, like... Whatever, if you enjoyed, you enjoy it. If you like watching people sure. dancing around or whatever, it's like, whatever, man. That's okay. It's just short-form media is what I'm it is. I'm being completely non-judgmental here by saying that yeah. I'm judging the it's shit It's short-form media. I judge yeah. short-form media yeah. not because it cuts in our profit margins. It's because no. if, I think it shapes people's brains into not being able to look into things more. Well, whatever the case, okay, yeah. the, the app itself... 
gets a lot of data from people. That's how it operates. Yes. It's about algorithms, right? Yes. So it figures out what people are interested in. Yeah. Okay. And it follows everything about your reactions to certain things, your likes, your dislikes. And of course, it's installed on your phone. It's got access to your phone number for verification. Mm-hmm. It's got access your to browser. you. Your browser. Yeah, you as a person. There's an in TikTok browser that people were using to go on the internet and it was tracking everything you type. Makes sense. But basically, there's yeah. this app that has a huge amount of, of information about you yourself personally on mm-hmm. here. Okay, mm-hmm. knows your habits, yeah. knows your location. It, It's like everything. It's bad. It's bad. And especially if you're uploading to TikTok and stuff too, your camera, your your this and that, Mm -hmm. everything. Now this app that knows everything about you and everyone who uses it, which is a huge percentage of the population uh, in the world, not only America or places like that, all of this data is accessible by the Chinese Communist Party. One billion users. Yeah. So a billion people around the world. A seventh of the world. Yeah. The Chinese Communist Party can call up that information right now. Mm. So if the Chinese Communist Party, say, for instance, says, we really, really, really hate these China show guys. We really hate, um, you know, Lao 86 and we hate Serpents at A. TikTok, tell us everything about them. TikTok will be like, sure, give us a second. Pull up the information from America because they have access to it. And they're like, okay, here's where they, 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 these are their likes. This is where they hang out. This is their this, this is their that. Bam. And it can be done. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that's not some bullshit like tinfoil hat, like Alex Jones frog thing that we're making up here. That's real. It's possible to do. It's possible. We, we haven't, it, until it goes to court, mm. we can't say it's been done. We can say it's, if China needs possible. that stuff, they'll get it. Yeah, they they'll can. They yeah. absolutely can. It's even been admitted by the TikTok, um, you know, like whatever, some board. higher ups yeah. board or whatever. That yes. Engineers from China and yeah. their staff in Beijing and in China yeah. have access to information in America, to Americans' data. Yeah. So they have access to it, right? Yep. And that's why they can just say, we need this data. They yep. don't need to say why, do they? They're just like, no. oh, we're busy tweaking the algorithm, so we need the data of this group of people or something. I mean, that's a, that's a huge generalization, but this is basically how it works. China owns ByteDance. Yes. ByteDance is the company that runs TikTok. And the people that run ByteDance, although that they say and they've pushed for because of legal pressure mm-hmm. that all Americans' data has to be stored in America, the people running the company still get the say over what happens. I mean, it doesn't matter if the data is stored in America or Singapore or whatever. Yeah. They still admit that the Beijing engineers and the people in ByteDance, uh, Be- ByteDance, what am I, American here? Mm-hmm. They can access that information. All right. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where it's yeah. stored. It's like, oh, I've got my bank account in America, but here's the password. Yeah, you exactly. Know? It's exactly. like, it doesn't matter. They can still access it. So it's a huge security threat. And I think we can all agree that China is not a friend of the world right now. Mm. Okay? And they will use this information for whatever purposes they want. And it's not a good idea to have that much power in the hands of a pretty unstable, pretty crazy government like the CCP. Yeah. And anyone who thinks that there's some kind of um, checks and balances no. in bite dance, no. no. All, all Chinese companies, it doesn't matter how big they are, they have to report back to the Chinese government. Correct. I know this for a fact having worked at Tencent. And for those of you who don't know who Tencent is, they're massive. They are the ones who created WeChat, um, Weixin, which every Chinese person in the world uses. I can say, bar three of them who just, I don't know, can't see or something. Everyone uses it, okay? It's part and parcel of everyday life, communications, paying for things, all of that sort of thing. They also have massive Tencent gaming. That's like all this online gaming stuff. They are huge. And I used to work for Tencent. I worked for Tencent for a number of years. They have Communist Party officials in the building at all times. Of course. Every company does. Yeah, they have to. They have to, and they told me themselves, they have to, when the Chinese government uh, requests something, they have to give it to them. They don't have a choice. No Chinese company has a choice to deny the Chinese government. Not one. And ByteDance is no exception. ByteDance is a great wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. And so if you've got engineers in ByteDance, say you're an engineer, right? And you now have to pass a a, a TikTok... uh, Checked. So TikTok's going to say, we're going to vouch and, and look for our engineers and they run a background check on you and they see, oh, he's not a Communist Party member. 
Okay, he's probably safe. He's a good engineer. So you're an engineer that's now passed the test. You have been given access to the files in America. Okay, great. Now the Communist Party comes to bite dance and says, we need that information. They're like, sure, Matt, go fetch those files. And you're like, okay. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't no. matter. You can try to vet anyone in bite dance and say he's okay. He still it's, has to answer to the CCP if might, he's not a member himself. After you guys see this, the Senate grill. Yeah, we've got to show you this next which clip. Is brilliant. Yeah. I have to preface this by saying the defense from TikTok is so idiotic. Yeah. When you watch it, if you have any understanding about China, because it's a bald faced lie. Yeah. It's preying on people that are using a Western slash American judicial lens yes. on how China operates. And the, the be all and end all of what they're saying is, I can't verify if people in TikTok or in ByteDance are Communist Party members because that's their political affiliation. Bullshit. It's not a party that mm. you go and say, oh, I'm going to be, today I'm going to be part of the Democrat Party or yeah. Libertarian Party or I'm going to be part of the Green Party. It's not a democratic country. No. Political affiliation, it doesn't even matter no. if that person is in the Communist Party of China because somebody in that company is. Yes. And they're overseeing the entire operation. This isn't some bullshit like an uh, American company or a UK company that gets to do whatever they want mm. and stave off the authorities. That's, yes. there's, no, there's no layers in between this. Yeah. It is the CCP overseeing everything at ByteDance. There's no separation of no. company and state. No, but she's implying that yeah. there is. Oh, I don't know what political people's political affiliation is. Well, Shut let's, up. Let's watch the clip. Yes. Let's just play the clip. Everybody, please pay attention to this. It's important. Senator Hall, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to all the witnesses for being here. Ms. Pappas, let me start with you. I have to say, it's great to see you here today. I have repeatedly invited your company to testify before Congress. I invited them to testify to the Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime and Terrorism in November of 2019. I invited them to testify again in September of the following year. Both times we were stiffed. TikTok told me that they would set up a meeting with the CEO. They didn't want to testify in public, but they set up a meeting with the CEO after November 2019. They then canceled that meeting. So uh, it's nice to see TikTok being willing to answer questions uh, in public. It's a, it's a pleasant change. Um, let's, let's dig into a few things, if we could, specifically about TikTok's links to the Chinese Communist Party. In response to a letter from some of my colleagues, TikTok claimed earlier this year that the company has never shared data, never, with the Chinese government. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. And has never shared data with the Chinese Communist Party. Is that correct? We will never share data, period. Uh, my question was in the past tense. Have, has TikTok ever shared data with the Chinese Communist Party? We have never shared data with the Chinese government, correct. With the Chinese Communist Party? Yes, correct. Uh, do you have any, uh, have you ever shared it with uh, members, two members of the Ch Chinese Communist Party? We have said many times, Senator, that we do have Chinese en engineers based in China. I don't think there's any platform up here that would be able to speak to what you're talking about in, as it relates to the political affiliation of an individual. But I'm happy to assure you that we are ensuring the access controls around our data as well as the storage of that data in the United States. So I think you're telling me that there are TikTok employees or ByteDance employees who are members of the Chinese Communist Party? Is that to what I No, I'm saying I wouldn't be able to verify that. Oh, well, let me just ask you that affirmatively. Are there members of, are there TikTok employees or ByteDance employees who are members of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm saying nobody that's sitting on this panel could tell you a political I'm not interested about anybody's opinion. Any I'm asking individual. you a factual question. Are there members of the Chinese Communist Party employed by TikTok and ByteDance, yes or no? I wouldn't be able to tell you the political affiliation of any individual. What I can tell you is how much we're investing. No, no, membership in, in the Communist Chinese Party is not exactly well like membership in the Democrat Party. So I'm, I'm looking for an answer. You, you so tell me you don't know? TikTok doesn't know. I'm, I, here's what I can tell you. I can tell you that our U.S. and Singapore leadership, there are no... CCP members, I can tell you. So you that do know that, but, you, but you're telling me that you don't know if there are any members who are employed by TikTok or ByteDance, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I am happy to share that we are putting access control. That's not my question. My question well is, that's not my question. My question is, are there any TikTok employees or ByteDance members, uh, employees, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Yes or no? 
Senator, I'm saying nobody could sit up here and give you that So you answer. don't know? You're saying you don't know. You do know your leadership isn't, but you don't know about your employees. Is that your testimony? I know that everyone who makes a strategic decision at ah. this platform is not a member of the CCP. Uh, so there we go. I mean, I guess that's pretty much... Uh, it's self-explanatory. It's, it's self-explanatory, guys. <clears throat> the CCP has access to your data if you use TikTok. Yes. Mm. Because if employees of ByteDance in China have access to the U.S. data, that means the Communist Party of China has access to the U.S. data. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Is that simple? I mean, I, that's I was going off because it's just so, it makes me so mad because it's such a clear, easy answer. Yeah. Yes. Like, oh, yes. we don't know a political No, you know. You know. But yeah. you know. Yeah. You don't run an entire company that's from China and not know that. You yeah. know that better than I do. Yeah. That's the problem. So every every single company in China has to have Communist Party members in it. Have to. It's it's not like you have a choice in the matter. So there yeah. are. So um that he, senator seemed like kind of a douche, to be honest. Yeah. But like that notwithstanding, like it was yeah. a very simple question. And the, the answer is yes, you know. Yeah, of course she does. Yeah. Uh you know, like I'm not I'm not ever anyone to to really try to tell people what to do, like when it comes to boycotting things and so on. I can suggest doing things. And I do think that if you are like addicted to TikTok, if you are a massive TikTok user, that you should probably just reconsider it, you know, because you you are feeding your information to China. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, and you are helping them. So if you have the choice, um, maybe choose something else. I don't know. Maybe. maybe In, choose something else. I don't know. Give Instagram shorts or stories or whatever a shot. I don't know. Maybe YouTube shorts. I hate, YouTube I hate shorts this stuff so me much. Off yes, so much. like it's whatever. The freaking yeah. feed. <laughs> yeah, it, it sucks that there isn't a, a proper alternative to TikTok for people mm. who are kind of stuck on it. But whatever. We just wanted to let you know that that's the case. Yes. So um, this brings us to our final part of the show, which of course is the Yamcha, where we just kick back, relax, mm -hmm. answer your super chats, have a good time. And uh, for those of you who don't know how this works, it'll stay up now live. You get to watch, it'll stay up for the whole weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show. But if you are a patron at any level, you will always have access to the full thing. If you want to go and listen to the the, the long Q&A, maybe you'll find a little nugget of truth in there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway, guys.